Good morning. Hello there. Happy 2021. How are you feeling, yes. Elizabeth? Yes, well, I'm feeling really great. It's six, <laughs> six o'clock. Just had half coffee. Uh, yeah, how's everybody? Hope you're all good. We've got some messages already. Uh, oh, skip ads. Uh, just to let you know, I can't see the screen uh, without my glasses, and I can't read this without with. I have to. That doesn't matter anyway. So Jamie's going to be looking and watching and seeing what you all say. <laughs> yes. So uh, this, we're a two-man band. Um, what this <laughs> means is is that Liz is going to be our. Uh, this meeting secretary this morning aren't you <laughs> she's going to be uh, keeping everyone in order and making sure you all behave yourselves and i'm going to be twiddling knobs which is uh, something i'm very good at where's the chat stream uh, the chat stream i'm going to bring up in a second uh, okay. since we've just started uh, can we all check that you can hear us please let us know in the chat blah, 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 blah. Um, oh look we both look marvelous apparently <laughs> who's that <laughs> okay so uh, here's the order of events. Uh, if you're new to our live broadcasts, then you'll know that we like to keep an ordered house. So we try not to ramble too much, do we? Um, so we're going to uh, stick to a kind of schedule of mm. topics and you'll find all those topics uh, in the video description. So have a look at those. So what this basically means is, is if you have questions that fall in one of those topics, then please try and save your questions for then secondly we will do our level best to keep an eye on the chat but we can see it's already very busy so uh, if we miss your question please just uh, give us another shout or write in caps don't God, talk about rambling on he hasn't shut up it's my turn to talk just check out and see what they're saying <laughs> um, cheeky yeah, just an another word on comments if you kind of stick to the topics that we've written the first six topics we're going to cover off and then it's open so don't throw anything in yet because we won't read it until we've done the first six topics yes are you watching yes i am <laughs> um, now if you're watching this retrospectively don't worry we're not going to sit here and name check everyone in the chat for the first 10 minutes which is what can happen and also after we finish recording this retrospectively we're going to put in timestamps in the video description yeah. so you can jump to each topic <coughs> uh, for those of you who are live don't forget of course we have super chat which is a feature available in most countries and this will allow you to put your name in big bright lights yeah, so, so that we, we see. so that we do actually see uh, your your questions providing you've got conversation I can't see anything yes uh, okay then, Madam Secretary. Yes, okay, so the first thing is, and you can look at that while we're both talking, can't you? What have we been doing since our last video? Who if, asked that? Uh, this, is, this is the topics. Oh, it's the topics, sorry. Uh, never read anything I write. Anyway, <laughs> so the last video we did was, well, just before Christmas, um, and I guess that most people watching will have seen it. Uh, we had reached the end of 2020 I think like most people had and we were utterly exhausted stressed out whatever we needed time off uh, and we said to you that we would come back we weren't quite sure when but we would come back once we had relaxed and what did we do well we treated excuse ourselves me. to a <coughs> oh excuse me she's a bit chesty as our Liz we treated ourselves to a luxurious two-day break in a very posh hotel. Yeah, over Christmas. That was nice. Yeah, it was a Shangri-La hotel. And actually, it was probably our first time off the boat in, what, two years or something? So I think normally, of course, you every year we would uh, go away and uh, maybe go back to the UK, go and visit our family. But since we haven't done that, uh, we have literally been on the boat constantly. So literally just two days off the boat was a real treat, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. And uh, so that was just up the road because uh, we're right. We're in the marina at Kota Kinabalu, by the way. That's where we are right now. And that's where we've been since just before Christmas, although we are hoping to get away. But more on that later. Yeah, we went to the Shangri-La uh, with a whole load of friends, other yachts, and an uh, enormous amount of alcohol was drunk and loads of food. So much food we could we had rolled around the place. <laughs> uh, so that was a that was a good start to our break. But the other thing we did is we we pretty much closed all our social media down. Not only that, the news. <laughs> Don't uh, <laughs> talk about the news. I should have said we're no, not talking about. No. The news. Not going to talk about the news, but the, all the only thing I will say is that as of this moment right now, 
it's a new day, it's a new dawn, it's a new year, things in all directions. Let's hope things get positive and filled with love. Indeed. Uh, actually, just a little note of interest. You mentioned lots of booze and lots of eating. Well, yeah. in the new year, I've quit the booze yeah. and Liz is fasting. Yeah, I'm How not, about that? Yeah, yeah. So you're doing dry January, but mm. we'll see how long it goes on for. Uh, after the end of January because he's doing really well. He was a git the first two weeks. He was awful to live with, but he's nice again now, so that's good. And when I say I'm fasting, I'm trying this intermittent fasting thing where you only eat for six hours during a 24 hour period. So between 12 and six I eat. Um, it's really a kind of a detox thing and it's supposed to help your alimentary canal and blah, blah, blah. I'm enjoying it and I'm sleeping much better. She's a git as well. <laughs> anyway, we've rambled on enough. So, number two, thanks for all your comments, messages and suggestions expand. <laughs> well, before we thank everyone for all the comments we've received already, just uh, in the chat we've got so mm. many people from all over the world. We've yeah, got go people on, from thanks. Iceland, Poland, Mississippi, Tennessee, Canada, Netherlands. It just goes on. So, great to see you guys. Yeah, the last uh, video that we did before Christmas, we received, and we keep saying this in our up and coming episodes, we received over a thousand comments. Yeah, and I was still getting more yesterday. Uh, obviously, our patrons have to be mates, have been in touch with us directly, and we've had messages. And do you know what? That was the best tonic. That mm. was absolutely the best tonic for the way we felt at the end of the year. We were just feeling uh, useless and pointless. Um, and we will talk about that in another video a little bit more, but yeah, it was, wow, those comments. There's so many of you commented who never commented before mm. and said that you've been watching us for ages. So really big thanks to you guys, because I know a lot of you watch on the TV and to make a comment, you've got to get on a phone, I think, or a laptop. So thank you for making that effort. And you know what? You really, really, really cheered us up. Mm. And you're probably the main reason that we're back. I, I think Those so, comments. because I was planning, I was thinking at least three months off, yeah. and uh, when we started reading the comments, I thought, I kind oh, of feel on. sort of, not duty bound, but I feel no. like I'm cheating these people, and of course we should give a big shout out to our FTP mates and our patrons as well, who, you know, they support us uh, every month, so there was a period when we weren't putting out episodes early for these guys, and they stuck by us yeah. too, uh, sending us great comments, uh, yeah. really encouraging comments, so yeah. that's good. I think um, really what had happened for me from an editing point of view was that uh, the Saba Rally was s such a difficult series to edit. And uh, I was taking, as I said in the previous video, up to five days to put together one episode. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, what we're planning to do in terms of editing shortly. But uh, having read all those comments and those really encouraging uh, thoughts, I thought, well, you know what? It's not a lost cause after all. It's maybe time to get back and uh, do some editing. And of course, being mildly creative we were missing it a little bit as well i mean hey we've got to do something on the boat haven't we if it's not boat maintenance what else are you going to do so i'm i'm actually now managed to get on my phone the live chat because he's not replying to any of you and i just want to say thank you thank you Wond wonderful wonderful um forget duty have fun at your own pace loyal egan a nutty traveler we live through you guys no kidding well we live for you guys so i guess <laughs> that's a mutual thing um, been watching for years, says Laura League and Brandon White. Love your sailing video and your story from what happening in the sailing, the COVID-19 taking in your area high from, I high from Ireland. I don't know if you're Irish and that was my useless attempt at an accent. <laughs> <laughs> been watching you guys for years, great to see you. Um, okay, so now I've got this so I can join in. Oh, dearie me, that's the, that's the last <laughs> thing we want. We need you to keep it on the schedule, please, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Madam Secretary. Somebody called Boy and Tea, hey. Hey, pay yourself. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. If you just get up the schedule because yes. um, uh, Jose has asked, uh, hello from Chile, will you ever visit Patagonia? Oh, we gosh. are going to be talking about our plans yeah. shortly, so I think that's uh, coming up. But uh, yes, what are we okay, going to so about Okay, so our now? next point was your suggestions on how we can reduce our workload. Now, we had uh, a few comments specifically from patrons at FTP Mates before the live uh, show so I'll, I'll just read those out now so 
Suggestions for how we can reduce the workload to try and help us. K Tenant, the only comment I have on your videos is please don't shorten them. If quality, i.e. time spent editing, goes down, that's perfectly fine, she says. I totally get that this whole endeavour can be a lot of work. I personally appreciate watching your videos. Whatever you decide is best for you, I'll still continue to support. Uh, along the same theme, Carrie had an odd second case comment about not shortening the videos. But again, that's totally up to you. Stay well and enjoy every day. Cheers, Kay. Danny, um, one of our regular Hi, Danny. Mates. Hi, Danny. Regarding the length of the videos, good wine is in small barrels. Like it. Yes, very good. <laughs> um, so, and, so, so immediately yeah. there, we've, we've got a conflict there because yeah. we've got Kay who's saying don't shorter them. And then Danny is suggesting that, that maybe we should. And in fact, the shortening of the videos is something that uh, kept recurring. Yes. Uh, so these are for, from uh, the people we have been having a direct dialogue with, with. But thousand comments and more on the last video. That came up quite a lot. So don't worry about it. Make, it, make them shorter. Um, the other thing that came up was concentrate on content, not style. Erica. Erica Maxim. Hi, Erica. Hope you're there. I uh, really enjoy your videos, love the way they're put together, but it would be fine to abide by the 80-20 rule. So, you know, less, you know, don't, don't, don't worry so much about, about the, uh, the quality. And Danny, again, it, if too much editing harms your enjoyment, go back to the content and turn a blind eye to the container. Now, I'll let you answer that because that's okay. very much you. Yes. Well, here's the thing, Danny, and everyone else who suggested that we should do uh, shorter videos. We've actually taken that on board. In fact, that is going to be our main aim now, is to shorten the videos. Unfortunately, what happens is, is that when I put together these shorter videos, I can do them quicker, but then I can't help tweaking little bits <laughs> and thinking, oh, okay, maybe we could put a little overlay in here or uh, smarten up the color grading, uh, color correction on this little clip here. So there is a part of us that can't help but want to uh, really put our 110% in the production of our videos and I'm afraid we're not going to be able to change that. You're never going to change him because he's a perfectionist so he will always try and uh, make it the best as he can and continue to improve so by shortening it just it just helps out so um, the other thing was once a fortnight or monthly that's right. the other thing that you suggested yes. in YouTube. Okay. Um, but so we've decided we're going to keep it weekly mm -hmm. because we, we just want to keep that going and um, yeah, I shorten them a little bit, little bit. Yeah, mostly. so we, we did think about um, bi-weekly or monthly, which is actually what we did when we, <coughs> when we started, when we very first started after the refit. Um, I think you have to remember that as creators on YouTube, there are certain algorithms that we kind of have to stick by as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the sh shitty side of doing YouTube videos that you guys are probably not aware of. But um, unfortunately, if you're inconsistent in your output, then the algorithm almost penalizes you. So if you're doing weekly and then you suddenly drop to bi-weekly or, or, or monthly, um, then your videos stop being promoted. So there is that side of YouTube yeah. that we have to stick to. But we're not going to allow that to um, force us. And we said that just before we had a break. Yeah. We said, you know, we, we can't let this rule us. We have no. to be doing this on our terms. And remember, if you uh, are a subscriber and you set the notification be uh, bell, it means that you do get... You're, you're told our videos arrived. It's just new people mm. who, do, who, don't, who don't see it necessarily, but who cares? Who cares? Who cares, eh? So, we have got some dun -dun 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 news for you. Okay, everyone, hold on to He's your pants. Tell you. Yeah. So, uh, we've got uh, a lot of people now uh, tuned in, so it's probably an appropriate time to give you our exciting news. <laughs> Pause for effect. No, Liz is not pregnant. <laughs> no, we're not getting another cat or dog. That's not happening. The exciting news is this. When we start putting out our videos, which is going to be next Sunday, that's a week's time. I think that's the very beginning of February. We are going against the grain and putting out daily <laughs> videos. So ignore everything we said before then. Before you go, what? No, it's daily videos for two weeks. Yeah. So actually six days, then a day off, and then six days before we start going back to episodes proper. Yeah. So there's so, a lot of stuff coming out. The thinking behind this is this. 
obviously we uh when we when we last left you we were all the way back down the east coast of saba so of course we've got some great footage coming back up that coastline back towards kudat around the tip of borneo and it just felt a shame to sort of bin all that and start again from yeah. where we are now so it's basically a way of catching up on all of those events that happened leading up to the present day because bear in mind one thing we do not like doing is editing videos that are six months old and i know a lot of people who watch youtube kind of get fed up with this with yeah. uh, channels generally and sailing channels in particular they realize they're watching videos recorded almost a year ago we don't like doing that from a creative point of view i find it a lot easier to be editing videos that we recorded last week rather than last month the other reason for doing it was to try and test this idea of doing um, eight to ten minute videos instead yeah, yeah. and you know what i found it a lot easier to edit eight minute videos it is much easier uh, simply because you have more footage to choose from yeah so you can bin all the uh, average footage and just keep the really good stuff. And uh, telling a story, which is ultimately the most important thing about putting out an episode, to tell a story with a beginning, middle and end, I found was actually quite easy in doing it in eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, it, uh, what I've seen it all looks good. I mean, you've got, you've got them all done. There's like, yeah, a bit of fine tuning to, to go, but we are getting ready to upload them. And the first one will come out next Sunday. Is that right? Uh, that is yeah correct so in a week's time uh first one will come out uh patrons net to be mates i'm going to upload all six to you guys this week so you'll get a chance to see all of them in one go um so if anyone <laughs> anyone wants to see them all become a patron or an FTB made even better um well not even better just different so the, the, the only thing i would say to you is that when we are doing videos that are six months old i love looking at that fit footage and reliving you know, for me personally, but that's that's a selfish thing. I just love reliving everything that, that we did. Uh, that's okay when you watch back once, but when you're yeah. editing it and you have to listen to yeah. yourself talking, drowning on and on and on for like 20 times, then, yeah, it's one thing having to listen to her in real life and then having to put the headphones on and hear her in stereo, <laughs> that's a bit of a chore. So, yeah, uh, a few reactions here. How to Sailing said... Did they say daily? I missed it. <laughs> yes, if you've just joined us, we have just announced that we are going to be doing daily episodes for the next two weeks. Uh, I think in the intro of the first one, we actually say that uh, we're going to get right up to our time in the boatyard. Uh, but unfortunately, having done the editing, we haven't quite got to the boatyard. But the exciting thing I think about these uh, daily episodes is that it's going to, I was really exploring ideas and themes yeah. and it was it to see good. what works and what doesn't. And I think what does work is us bickering with each other to camera. So there's going to be a bit of that. That's easy. Very easy. We don't need practice at that at all. Uh, but also to take a theme. And so each theme could be something as simple as what's it like to be a liverboard when you're cut off from the internet to um, how to find the best anchorage techniques for finding the best anchorage so uh, a bit of everything we've done one on dinghies as well choosing the best okay dinghy. Well, just don't tell them all this they'll let them find out <laughs> what's going on, what's going on? The, the, the news is that it's every day yes <laughs> with, with different themes yes but obviously of course we'd love your feedback uh, so keep commenting of course and as long as there aren't over a thousand comments for every video, we will answer every single one of them. In fact, this does go on to what do you want to see in our videos. Uh, so a number of people on the last YouTube video wrote ideas. And I've got a few here. Uh, kind of the main one is the daily life of being a cruiser. So uh, Carrie, Carrie Haddon, I think of your videos as the journal of your lives and feel like you are family. So I'm interested in how you're doing and what you're up to. Well, Carrie, FTB mate, you are part of the family. And Danny, Danny Basso, FTB mate, I'd also like to see videos about your daily life, seeing you beaking with each other is a blast. <laughs> and Ruth and Michael Bajant, 
love the storms, the big arms, anything really. And I also love a good bicker. <laughs> Michael and I can take sides. He'll always take Jamie's. I think most people will take my side, <laughs> really. Don't forget, I'm the one editing, so I edit out yes. me being a moody twat <laughs> and uh, Liz being all sunshine and rainbows, which happens very rarely. So, yeah, on, on the daily life of being a cruise, I think really that's what we've tried to reflect in, in, in our videos. Sometimes it might be travelling, ash going ashore, seeing what's ashore. Sometimes it's sailing. That is what being in cruise is all about. There's no sort of one set way of mm. being a cruiser, you know. Um, we're always doing different things, so I think we try to reflect that in the videos. Yeah, we've got Anton Sid in the live chat. Morning, guys, uh, or afternoon, evening, Whatever. good night. <laughs> uh, they said the problem is that your videos are so full of detail. If you leave the detail out, it is not the same video. The devil is in the detail, and that's one of the things that you're good at. I mean, that is very true, and of course, that is one of the challenges uh, of editing, as you guys know yourselves, of course, um, is trying to keep in stuff that's uh, relevant. Um, Bill, morning, Bill, uh, he says, would you consider managing some video editors? I, and I've, if I've guessed your question right, I think what you mean is, would we hand over editing to uh, a third party? The main problem with that, well, there's two things. The first is uploading all of that video to give to someone. Um, for the techies among you, we shoot in 10 bit and a lot of our stuff is in 4K. These are very, very big files. And to upload an episode's worth, you're talking hundreds of gigabytes just to get that footage over them. So the only way around that, of course, would be to have an editor on board, which uh, it's bad enough living with her. For you, you're the editor. Um, and of course, the second point is that we love that whole creative process. That is uh, the reason why we do it is because we love it and um, we will never let it be a chore. So this whole exercise was about getting back to the love of editing, uh, to, to, to maintain our enthusiasm for it. I think if we handed it over to we someone would never else, do that. Uh, it, it would lose our personal touch I because suppose. you don't always know what the story is you look at all the footage mm. and then uh, you'll come up with your story and I always get involved as well I look at what Jamie's doing and I say well I don't think there's enough of a hook there what about if we if we show this part of it you know so we work together on what we're trying to say in our videos it's not just a whole load of random shots put together so an editor can't get inside our brains nobody wants to get inside our brains uh, more comments on content. Susan King. Hi, Susan. Lovely to hear from you. It would be great to see a video of the marina, chat with other boaters, and just local scenery. So, yeah, we have got some footage of the marina that will be coming up. Uh, have we? Yes. Yeah, you've been out there with your camera. What else have you been doing? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we, we, we always, if we're in a marina, we'll always take some footage of it. It's a nice one, this one. It's a really good one. Um, uh, chat with other boaters. We do. We, we did a lot of that on the rally because we were with lots of other boats. But quite a lot of the time, we're not. We're we're on our own. Uh, but yes, I think that's a good point. I think perhaps we should do more. What yes. do you think? No? I was just reading the comments okay, here. So to say? yeah, we've just got nutty traveller. Much better to release videos that are closer in uh, closer in time. Yes, uh, agree with you there. Uh, Paolo says, hourly videos. <laughs> Why not direct live stream? yeah let's just put a camera up more. there and live stream it oh, yeah one of the i mean we would love to do more live streaming one of the issues here you can't really see it sitting comfortably here but there's a there's a whacking great big uh light diffuse light up there we've got the laptop the microphones uh to try and maintain the quality uh we have done live streaming via the phone before yeah uh, both on facebook and youtube it's a little bit wobbly uh, you don't have so much control over the microphone and the audio but uh, perhaps that is something that we can explore uh, a little bit a little bit more would be fun to do i guess i just got to read this one out martin mars you helped us to choose a catch rigged sailboat we will get her in two weeks and become liverboards more on sailing and rigging a catch would be great. <laughs> I'm sure it would. <laughs> We've got lots and lots on how we sail her um, over the years. So just keep watching. You'll just see what we do. Uh, yeah, so I think um, a few a few more. Uh, well, well, like Bosco Bob on uh, video content. I still like the mingling with the natives, he says, mm. in the video. But please don't become so formulaic that every video looks like every other one. Mix them up. Throw in a real stinker once in a while. 
just keep being yourselves. Uh, mingling with the natives, yes. Um, I think that's that's one of the things that we love doing. Yes. And, and we did actually even talk about splitting up our sailing videos to our travel videos. Yeah. That's not going to happen, by the way, but uh, it's a nice idea. We do have a yet to be edited video coming up where we visited a particular island, which very few people have been to. Yeah. Uh, even the lo very few locals go to this island and what we discovered on that island was mind-blowing it yeah. was absolutely fascinating and uh, having just done edited edited 12 eight minute videos I've now got to this video and I thought I cannot get this in eight minutes I could do it in two parts yeah. and then I thought well maybe we make this a follow the boat travel special so we kind of badge it up a little bit differently to say Look, folks, if you're into the travel side, this one's going to last a little bit longer. This will be 15 minutes because we've got so much to show you. So we're already breaking our rules. Well, let's see. We'll mm. see how it goes. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah. Is, you know, is that a good idea to actually mark it up differently? Because we do know that some people, some people only want the boat maintenance. Some people only want sailing without music. Some people want the bickering, of course. And a lot of you, like Bosco Bob, um, like the whole travel side yeah, of things. Yeah, that, that will, like, will always be there. And we will mm. always talk. Everywhere we go, we meet local friends. We've got a few, quite a few here already. Um, so, yes, talk, By the way, good. talking of Bosco Bob, uh, just giving us a shout out on the Super Chat. So Cheers, BB. Thank you very much Yay, indeed. Thank you. Um, Eric, so you were just saying a lot of people uh, like boat yard. Here we go. Eric Adler from Patreon. Cheers, Eric. Would love to see more boaty stuff. I think with all the shipyard stuff you've done, you may have burnt out on it a bit, but I would love to see all the little crap you must deal with daily. <laughs> so if anyone missed the refit that he's talking about, uh, it's the total sailboat refit, a year in a boatyard, rebuilding our sailboat. That's the playlist on Follow the Boat. Mm, that, was a, that was a few years ago. I mean, we haven't actually done uh, refit videos for quite some time now and i think that's one of the reasons why we're going to explore the boat yards when eventually yeah, we get to up. that um and there's some uh, some quite dynamic um cinematography in that as well you didn't pick up your camera once in the boat yard did you no, i was having a good time <laughs> she i did got, all the shopping and the got, cooking she got the sewing machine out yeah. can you believe that and there's no cover? there's no video evidence of it there's really? not one little shot well, of you so and video myself at the same time. We should have done it. Anyway, but we've An got excuse. the evidence of the new, of the new cover. I think yeah. there was a, a, a chat there. Yeah, yeah, we've got that. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, right. Uh, so there you go. Definitely more boaty stuff coming up, Eric. Uh, I never know how to say this. Paularian, Paolo, Paolo, less uh, from Patreon. Less editing, more instructional on how you plot your journey, how you go about sailing Esper and examples of documents needed when navigating to unknown territories. Yeah, I think a lot of people who watch where we are in this part of the world think, how do they do that? How do they get through all those different countries and things? We have got a video on um, all the paperwork that is required. I think I that's one, one of the problems is that we've already done a lot of these videos. Yeah. So people will send us a message saying, how about doing a video on what it's like to have a pet on board? Well, we've done that and we did it four years ago. And then people say, oh, didn't you do an episode on so-and-so? Which number was it? And we sit here going, um, <laughs> we've done so many episodes, we don't actually remember. So uh, the first thing to do is to check out YouTube search function because it does pick up on all the keywords of our videos. Uh, and, and that's the other challenge, I think, with editing is to, uh, to keep it fresh and to come up with new ideas. And by the way, Florian Kruger, thank you so much Cheers, in the super Florian. chat. Rules are there to be broken, even your own ones. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And they will be, we can promise you that. Good comment, yeah. So, so yes, we will. Um, yeah, we do talk about navigation and plotting the journey and sailing. And when we can, we do talk about um, all the paperwork involved in going in and out of countries. It varies so much from country to country and on the nationality that you are. Mm. So as UK residents, we have slightly different paperwork sometimes to say US or EU resident. It's all different. But it yeah, is, it is all different. And of course, don't forget, it's all changed at the moment, not mentioning, not mentioning the obvious. Uh, closures, everything yeah. is up in the air at the moment. Uh, uh, even we don't know what we're doing uh, right now in terms of paperwork. So right now that could be a different one to do. 
Okay, so going on uh, to point five on the topics, how we present, shoot and edit our videos. This sort of just came out of left field and it's from David Campbell, FDB mate. Cheers, Dave. Um, I'd like to have you discuss how you present yourselves so professionally and entertainingly. Also, I would like to learn more about how Jamie takes the drone videos and makes them so great to watch. Okay, I'll do the first bit. Go on then. Professional and entertaining. When we first started, we were very quite not quite sure what to say or do in front of the camera and literally as time goes on you stop trying to be something or copy something that you've seen and you just be you so that's all I can say um, and don't be shy of making a cock up because that people find that quite funny and don't try and be perfect you will fluff your lines and you will giggle when you're not supposed to and I think and we think just leave all that in so a very simple rule is just be yourself. The other follow-up point to that is talking to camera in public. That's yeah. I think is the biggest challenge. To be walking down a street holding a stick with a box and a fluffy thing on top, <laughs> your microphone, and talking to camera while people around you are sort of staring at you going, what's that? And of course, I guess in the States you probably see more vloggers on the streets these days and maybe in uh, Europe as well but uh, over here there are far fewer vloggers I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone else walking around uh, talking to camera like yeah. a vlogger so it's a bit more unusual over here and you do raise eyebrows they like it here though. but you have to kind of lose yourself in the moment and absorb yourself and not worry about that you're a passing moment yes. you know, as, as you walk past these people I've got a tip on when you're talking to camera is look into the camera lens not at the screen oh, i've yes. seen so many videos when people are talking at the camera because they're looking at themselves on screen and they should be looking straight into the camera well and yeah. that's also good because you don't see yourself and when you start seeing yourself you start thinking oh, yeah oh, this, you know that's a very good tip generally yeah. especially with young kids posting yeah. stuff up on instagram and tiktok uh you'll see that they are just obsessed <laughs> just by looking, looking, at themselves. looking at themselves look into the lens as we are doing now yes so drones okay so let's get a bit oh and Derek Young added to that on the oh, subject yes. of drones are there licensing requirements for drones in other countries so okay. how you fly and licensing okay so how we Cheers, make it Derek. look good I think was the question yes. um so all of our footage is shot in a format called log or vlog and this if you take uh, photos on your camera you'll notice that you can either take them in raw or jpeg and if you're used to taking them in raw this captures the most amount of photographic information uh, which then allows you and you have to post process it you have to add in you have to do your own color correction on raw uh, footage when it comes to cameras uh, a lot of video cameras can shoot in this format called log and it's similar to RAW. In fact, some video cameras can actually shoot in RAW at 12-bit, which is a super high definition uh, format. But using Log allows you to A, get the color correction right, and then much easier to color grade. And you can really push the color grading as well without degrading or it going pixelated. So that's uh, one of the tips that I uh, would say with shooting drone footage. Second is to shoot it in 4K, even if you're outputting in 1080, because it allows you to crop in. Um, and I tend not to use the automated features on drones, the, you know, the follow object, those kind of things. I tend to only do it by hand. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, and sometimes you get it wrong, um, but it just gives you a, a greater feel for it. Of course, I think generally with photography, as we all know, the best times of the day to be shooting is first thing in the morning, and last thing in the afternoon, that golden hour when the sun uh, becomes more diffused and you get a more even golden coloured light. Uh, the problem with that is on a boat is that most of our activities happen during the day in the glaring sunlight and that can be one of the biggest challenges with colour correcting footage is that you have very harsh shadows um, in the middle of the day when you're shooting video looking straight on at a scene or a person. The advantage with the drone is that if you are looking down with the drone, midday is actually a good time to be shooting because then you've got the sun behind you lighting everything up underneath you. Um, I hope that 
answered your question. You finished droning on now? I've finished droning on. Oh, hold on, there was one other question you said about uh, licences. Yeah, licensing. We do know that in Canada they brought in a rule last year, I think it was a year before, which said that any drone over 250 grams... I think there's lots of countries. Uh, but in Canada in particular, uh, any drone over a certain weight you had to get a licence for. So suddenly all these Canadian vloggers were having to go out and get their licenses or they bought the Mavic Mini, which fell under this uh, threshold, this weight threshold. Other countries like Thailand uh, outright banned it unless you had a license. India, I believe you cannot have, a, you can't even have a sat phone in India, no. but you cannot have drones at all. So different countries, different rules. Generally in Malaysia, they're pretty relaxed as Malaysia is in every respect mm. apart from the fact right here in the marina we are by a flight path uh, we're very close to the airport uh, but that's a standard rule across the board across the world is you cannot fly within no fly zones i think at some stage um if it's possible we're going to get you a license so mm. that might help in some places but yeah uh, it's difficult okay so onwards and upwards so this is the question that a number of you asked here. oh just just before you go on oh, i just quick, quick. <laughs> robert egbert has says how many drones have you destroyed yes uh, at least two I can think immediately uh, yes well I, I battered one yeah, uh, which took a bit of a beating hit the, hit the rigging with it hit the rigging flew it into trees and the other one the battery stopped yeah so here's a little tip um, especially with DJI drones and I think lithium batteries in general when they start to bulge they'll have a plastic uh, under cover when they start to bulge that is the time to bin your battery I didn't heed this advice and uh, when it's cold you can fit the battery into the drone and then as it heats up it starts to expand and that's what happened with our last drone a few months ago the battery expanded it popped out in mid-flight fortunately it was over water there were no people around uh, but that was that was the the greatest loss that yes. one because it was the just be been the drone. it was just before the rally okay as well. moving on <laughs> she's so bossy this one i knew i shouldn't have given her the schedule yeah, but because just right where are we going next that's no topic number six you Peter. can answer no go on you are Peter fact, do you know Based what? i'm leaving now bye no, no, no. so there's two uh, that that were before this so peter halliburton hi peter based on your current schedule when do you expect to reach eastern canada mm. Uh, where do you expect to leave Malaysia? And uh, Bosco Bob, where to next? Yes. Oh, gosh, that's a question that has been racking our brain. We've been racking our brains over. I mean, we don't even know when we're going to get out of Malaysia. So all long-term plans are shelved. It's all because of the border problems around the world. And until we can see any kind of movement um, with the introduction of the vaccine and whatnot and all the different things that are going on in the world, we're not going anywhere. In fact, we're not leaving here until till it's over. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Until, until the until the, uh, well, the borders open here, because the problem is, if we were to leave Sabah right now, we would not be allowed back. Hmm. Um, there are some moves to try and get between Sabah and Philippines open, and if that happens, we'll be doing that. We'll be going to the Philippines next. That's as far as we can say. As for Eastern Canada, that's. You know, it's a long way off. All the, those original plans to go to Japan and Canada, that's kind of out the window now. So we're just playing it by ear. We'll let you guys know, of course. I think it's the, it's the uncertainty of it all that's, yes. the, that's the real killer. So we could uh, untie the lines, slip the lines tomorrow, today if we wanted, leave Malaysia and go to the Philippines. We could do that if we wanted to. Uh, of course, uh, it would be against the weather, so we, you'd be stupid to do that And there's now. lots of quarantine problems and money you've got to pay um, another end. But also, you know, what's going on in the Philippines? What's going to happen there? Uh, we know that uh, COVID isn't really under... Sorry, I said the C word. <laughs> it's not really under control up there. Uh, anything could happen. And I think it's that uncertainty that troubles us. To get over to Canada, you know, the West Coast, let alone the East Coast... Of course, we're going through many, many countries, all of which have their own issues, their own quarantine rules. Some are closed borders completely. So it, it is that uncertainty that uh, makes it difficult for us mm. to say categorically, yep, we're going to be here, there. I think this is something that everyone shares, not just if you live on a boat, but just for everyone. This yeah. uncertainty is very troublesome. Yeah. So with this in mind, we have to take it on the chin. Uh, we are in a great place. Sabah have really looked after us. 
uh, not only the people but the authorities as well have been very very uh, understanding of our they situation have been superb here. so yeah, that's lovely and by the way newfoundland is one of the places i really want to see in the whole world so hope we get there uh yeah big shout out to navis worker on the super chat he says dreaming about this lifestyle and the adventure living through you open question what pirate legends have you heard on your travels pirate legends mm. well Ooh. there's a yeah i mean you heard any? modern pirates we know, if, know. Uh, go on then no go on do you think you're a modern pirate quickly go on then no haven't got an answer okay. oh sorry for <laughs> once she doesn't have an answer to something uh, no, I'm just trying to think of modern pirates. Of course, there's Captain Phillips. There's the whole Somali pirate uh, situation there. You had big... Uh, uh, um, oh, yes. I mean, talking of hearing pirates, we heard them. We didn't yeah. hear the pirates, but we heard the guys mm. on, who were being attacked mm. on the radio. On the radio. In the uh, we have heard that there are a couple of, what are they called? Lords? Drug, not drug lords. Uh, pirate barons, whatever they are. Yeah, around here. Uh, around here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we don't really know any details. I do remember when I was looking up pirates that the most successful pirate of all time was actually female, and she she worked out of China in the South China Sea. Oh yes, all uh, around there. Uh, remember her name? Oh, we should know. Look she's she's one of the most famous seafarers of all time. Yeah, incredible pirate, and uh, just ruled the waves. Mm. She's a woman, a little Chinese lady. <laughs> uh, so yeah, difficult one. Difficult one. Well done. Stumped St us. For once, you've st <laughs> stumped her. <laughs> Open question. So, just a few more random questions that we were given from our mates and patrons before this, and then we'll get down to answering any random questions you have. First one, Carrie Haddon. I wonder how being a nomad will impact your ability to get the vaccine. Uh, well, we can get it here in Sabah, in Malaysia. Mm. Um, we've been told we will be able to get it. We have to pay for it. I don't think it's going to be extortionate, but uh, depending on what vaccine's out and when, we do hope to get vaccinated here. So that's one good thing. Um, Bosco, go on. I was just going to say, uh, Lyle Egan, I'm sorry if that's uh, pronounced incorrectly, says, open question rather than planning question. Thoughts on cruising in Vietnam in general? I just thought I'd read that now since we're talking about future plans. Yeah. Uh, heard it's uh, read that it's less cruiser friendly than other countries that's what we've been told yeah um it i think it's certainly less cruiser friendly in terms of the places that you can anchor or more importantly of course safe places to leave the boat when the weather turns to shit it's the bureaucracy as well is very very difficult and you don't get very long there and the other also the other thing is all the fishing villages yeah. that stretch out many many tens of miles out to sea uh, i have heard stories of people who have sailed around there i think Dwayne and kelly they've sailed around there mm. and uh, they say that if you take a wrong turn you start going up the side of these uh, stilted houses and realize that there is no end to it and then yeah, you have to yeah. turn around and go back up the other way so that's you the same in myanmar they've got the same thing there mm. so would love to see vietnam it might not be something that we do by boat so it, if there's a possibility to fly there for a holiday we might try and do that can't see it happening by boat. Mm. Um, so, uh, so that was uh, carry on uh, vaccine, hopefully. Um, Bosco Bob again. Do you have Stellarium on your PC to know the stars you are seeing? Uh, we. And um, what is the most awesome thing you? I know that's your favourite word. That you have ever <laughs> seen in the night sky. So what do we use? Yeah. So we use. Uh, we used to use the, before we had smartphones. We had a laptop when we first started sailing uh, with... Back in Turkey. Yeah, it's um, it's Google's... You can now get it as an app. Uh, but before that, it used to be a desktop app. And so we used to sit in the cockpit with the desktop <laughs> and use this thing. And you'd have to program in your longitude and latitude manually. And uh, we spent many hours... Yeah, uh, we did. Doing. It's something we love doing. But of course, now we've got apps. Now we've got the apps. Um, I think it's Skywalk. Not yeah, Skywalker. Star Walker, Star Walker. Yeah. Starwalker, we prefer yeah, to Google's one. The most awesome thing that I've seen, in fact, actually, it was back when we were using the laptop, was three of uh, Jupiter's four moons. Um, yeah. Using this app, we were able to work out that uh, three moons were potentially visible around Jupiter. And I must have spent 15 minutes lying on my back, first of all, finding Jupiter, and then 
I spent ages. It was a very still night. We used your way. grandpa's old binoculars. Yeah, they were old bins. But sure enough, three little pin pricks. Yeah, that was pretty great. That was... I've never seen it since no, either. Very, very close to Earth, I think. We were just lucky. It happened to be the right mm. time. Um, for me, shooting stars never, ever fail to lighten my heart. Particularly when you're on a night sail and if you're out in the ocean, they just completely fill mm. the sky. It's unreal. And the best shooting star I've ever seen was recently in Sabra. Actually, I think it's coming back on the rally. I was doing an early morning shift just as the light was turning. And a rocket, like a firework, appeared to go across the sky. It was shooting star, but it was all different colours and I'd never seen one so colourful before mm. that was pretty great and the other thing I loved was when we came through the Red Sea was seeing Scorpius because you don't really see it in mm. the UK for the first time seeing the whole of Scorpius rise and go across the horizon overnight and it's, fact, it's my favourite constellation and in fact actually sometimes I think Scorpius will come straight up yeah. so it's literally climbing out of the water yeah Scorpion uh, do you remember the first time we saw the Southern Cross as well yes. at, at sea yeah. and uh, I was completely baffled because we were still in the Northern yeah, Hemisphere yeah we didn't know you could Just see it didn't, didn't realise of course for you, for you guys in the Southern Hemisphere you see it every night but yeah. for us that is fascinating when you cross over the equator and the the starscapes completely changes uh, it, yeah. it's, it's a real head puzzler I should yeah, say love looking at the stars they never ever stop doing that should, the just, moon. should just give a shout out I mean uh, this oh blimey. how do you pronounce you you're, Zano better, you're better at pronouncing those Zanani Zanani Fimus Fimus Zanani so please if we pronounce your name wrong so sorry but thank you so much for the vaccine fund maybe, <laughs> maybe we should change the rum fund to the, <laughs> the vaccine to the vaccine fund, that's a really fund. good idea Thank oh, you so much. Oh. Very sweet. Really appreciate that. Okay, so that was... Uh, and we've got two more open questions and then just going to look at the chat. So John and Michelle Schultz, we're looking into purchasing a water maker. Love to hear your thoughts on what you've been using. Also, do you have an ultraviolet system? So on the water maker, I'll just answer this quickly. We have a Schenker. You can talk about that in a second. And we've also got two good videos on our water mm. maker. So if you want to watch those, you watch How to Repair and Service a Water Maker on a Sailboat, which is in our Sailing Q&As playlist, Sailing Q&A 4. And the other one, we strip our water maker, replace the membrane and drop in. Sailing episode 128. So there's loads on our water maker and you're always fiddling around and shooting that, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, so here are my thoughts on the water maker. Uh, we have a, it's a low pressure system, it's a Schenker 30M or M30, which is a modular system, so you can potentially break up components of it. And because it's a low pressure system, um, it has this uh, return pump, which increases the water pressure within the system itself. So it's super efficient and it, it only uses 8 amps at 12 volts, which is amazing to produce 30 litres an hour. And when we first got it, there were... 12 years ago. Yeah, it was at least 12 years yeah. ago, wasn't it? And it's still going. And now we have replaced a couple of parts and Schenker actually improved some of the uh, manufacturing of the O-rings inside the system. They now use a night trial, I think. Instead. Anyway, they've changed the system and it has been super efficient and we've loved it. Yes, I uh, can't live without a water maker. Absolutely not. Mm. But I would say with hindsight given the choice and knowing how much you actually end up motoring I would install a motor driven water maker mm. uh, because you're going to be producing closer to 120 litres an hour rather than 30 litres and of course you'd be using it when the engine's running so power doesn't really become an issue. Well they haven't said that. I don't think we've ever felt we haven't got enough water. No, but we're still conservative. I mean, imagine the luxury of being able to wash the decks whenever you wanted yes. with fresh water. That's yeah. something that we don't do. Uh, we don't shower enough as it is, even when there's bloody shower blocks up there. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I think it does depend on your uh, power consumption needs. Mm. Obviously, your budget, uh, they're not mm. cheap. Uh, the other thing that yeah, might thousands. be worth looking into is actually building your own system because yeah. th they are pretty straightforward. You have a high-pressure pump. You've got your membranes, which are standard, um, and that's pretty much it. We've had ours for 12 years, as we say, and Jamie does really look after it well. Um, they've probably changed a bit since we bought ours. 
so shop around i don't know about prices are they still bad very expensive i think they are still very expensive they can but they be, really yes. are worth it they allow you to go to some of these m really out of the way places as you've seen that we've been we never have to worry about having enough water wherever we are we just make our own uh, so we don't have to go ashore and bring loads of it back it's just really makes your life freer so if you're considering whether you should or shouldn't sh do it should yes right last question from um fdb mates and this is by the way just before you yes. say that i should just say uh that's how many people we've got watching oh, it's, it's, it's in, wow. in the hundreds uh we Gosh. with our live broadcast because uh we don't like to leave a two three hour video for people to watch retrospectively we do try to keep it to an hour uh but Ish. we will stay on longer if the questions keep coming uh so I think Liz is going to say she's wrapping up with the last question we've got down here. And then if you've got any questions, put the, use the super chat to get noticed and uh, we will answer your questions. Yeah, so you're keeping an eye on that. Just Bob will uh, ask the last one. You're going to have to answer this. Uh, from John and Michelle Schultz. Hi, guys. Wi-Fi and what equipment do you guys use? Do you have an LTE modem with a booster or do you use your phone as a hotspot? Okay, uh, no, we don't use an LTE modem. In fact, I was looking at them only the other day. No, we, we do have a modem. In fact, we've got three, four modems on board, uh, but we just use the hotspot. We are blessed with good connectivity. Uh, in Southeast Asia generally, Southeast Asia generally, connectivity, providing you're within sight of land, is very good. It's pretty consistent we're running off a little hotspot now on our phone which is in the cockpit uh, connectivity is cheap and it's pretty fast uh, we then share that hotspot obviously to our other devices uh, we do have a uh, obviously we've got a modem for our na uh, uh, navigation equipment but we also have a modem for uh, general use so we've got a new tv so that is plugged in via ethernet to that modem that modem shares that hotspot connection to the TV, to our server. We've got a NAS server, which we use as well to back up all our files. Um, so that's generally what we use. The problem I thought with the LTE modems was that, uh, unless the guy got it wrong in the shop, you have to take the card out to top up. Now bear in mind, we get through a lot of internet connection. So we are topping up on a daily basis. In fact, sometimes we're topping up twice a day because those that are tend to be the better deals or at least the faster connectivity are the daily deals so if that sim card is in the modem you've got to take it out and that's a bit of a pain in the backside so we just stick with the uh, the hotspot a couple of people said earlier there's an echo is there still an echo what does that mean echo echo there's an echo, echo. Mm. uh so but that that, that was uh let's stop saying that now i don't know uh, so that's that's it for our pre-planned questions. So we're just gonna we're both gonna scroll through the chat now. And oh, Debbie, it's snowing in London. Whoa. Oh yes, I heard <laughs> it was gonna snow. Ooh. Oh gosh, love for India, Bikram Das. Yes, we love India. We miss India. It's one of our favourite places in the world. If you've never been to India, everybody else, go. But I'll warn you now, you either love or hate it. There's nothing in between. We loved it. We went there on our way around the world and we stayed for three years. That's how much we loved it. Uh, lots of people saying no echo, no echo. Oh, okay. no, ironically, no echo, no, <laughs> no echo, echo, no echo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kev Berry. Hey, Kev. Hey, Kev. Morning. How's married life treating you? <laughs> he did say he can't see how he does super chat. I think we... You had this problem before, Kev. I think it's because you're on uh, an iPad. Oh, it's the iPad, yeah. is it? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It should be available in Australia, but uh, yeah, that's possibly what it is. Um, let's just read some <laughs> random comments here. Uh, Loyal Egan says, prepping to cruise, thinking of doing some ABYC courses to make boat life more clear and maybe could pick up odd jobs. Recall your thoughts on competing with locals, though. Yes, he says good idea or not. Very good point. Um, some, most people we came across in Thailand, I don't want to badmouth Thailand, they're almost tribal when it comes to protecting their industries. And you have to yeah, be super careful not to step 
on local people's toes. I think you may be better off getting a skill that they don't have in that country. Mm. For example, let's say um, boat surveying. Uh, I think that's a skill mm. that perhaps local people may not have. But if you Rigging. come come in as a carpenter and you start taking away work uh, with from a local carpenter, be very, very careful. And I would say don't do it. It, it can get dangerous. Uh, we say. do know people that... Uh, have carpentry skills for example and then we'll go in and find local carpenters and work with them that's uh, one thing that you could do but I would be very careful of that of course you could moonlight just in the on the dock you know if your neighbor next door has a problem with an electrical component and you know how to fix it well that's kind of cruising anyway isn't mm. it you help each other out with that sort of thing and if it's up to him to pay you a few beers or a, a few quid for that then fair enough but uh, yeah just just be a bit be careful especially in uh, in this area yeah um hello ruthie rose oh, morning, where chaps. are you are you in england where are you and trev hedges all right mate hello uh you're a bit late but i'm glad you made it so um let's just say a couple of people have said what do you miss what do you miss about england uh and what do you miss about not living on land what do you think about that? Yes, yeah, so Martin Mass, what is the number one thing you miss from living on land or in, in a house? What Do you miss anything? I think storage. Yes, that's very good. Storage. Uh, funny enough, just to digress very slightly, I've bought the most non-boaty thing, electronic item for the boat that you could think of. And it's a dehumidifying cabinet <laughs> for all of my camera lenses. I mean, how ridiculous is yep. that? My camera lenses are stuffed into a flight case and obviously with the humid atmosphere here, if I'm not careful, they're going to get mouldy. So I kind of needed to buy this thing. But where to put it? It's a cabinet this big. Um, so definitely stowage, that's a bit of an issue. But they do say, of course, is that you, you fill up any space in which you live in. So, uh, you know, if we were on a 37-foot boat or a five-bedroom uh, Three storied house, I think we'd fill it full of shit anyway, wouldn't we? We probably would, we yes. certainly do. What's the matter? Do you just, want me just, to get closer? Yeah, that's it. I'm in yep. the same place. Bum cheeks, is that you want to step them out at the beginning? <laughs> um, what else do we miss from from, ho uh, from, from land? Uh, well, you miss pubs, but they don't at the moment because you're Cause not, I'm not drinking. drinking. You're on a dry January. Yeah, if you miss that, I'm not drinking. It's all about people, isn't it? It's family and friends. Yeah. That's what you miss most. Yeah. I mean, we made new friends as we go around the world and we get very close close to some people but there's family I it's think, been a long time for you yeah it's been over two years i miss yeah. them uh the other thing uh, the the convenience of shopping of being able to walk out your uh, front door climb into your car or wander down the street to the corner shop do your shopping put it straight into the boot of the car or just wander back and go straight into your house and offload into the fridge and to your cupboards. On a boat, of course, you've got the added complication of a dinghy. And then, of course, you've got to take all the stuff out of the dinghy onto the boat. You've got to find somewhere to tie that dinghy up in town. You've got to make sure that's safe. Um, that's something else that uh, that convenience factor is something that we miss from land but you know it is what it is and you put up with it and it can be quite a fun experience yeah it becomes part of the day it really. does you just it's just a different way of looking at things mm. I, I think don't miss work at all don't miss british winters when they're wet and miserable although i do like snow so i miss snow yeah I like to see a bit of snow i think um once the corridors open between here and the UK, we will go uh, back to the UK for a visit, see your family and friends, and uh, see a season or two. So yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Dennis Glick. Thank you very much. Super chat. Good man. Uh, okay. They ask a question. Oh, just giving us money. That's lovely. How yeah. kind. Uh, catch me outside. What's your favourite whiskey? Ooh, that's mean to ask Jamie that because he's not drinking at the moment. Um, I love Laphroaig. So I really like the peaty ones. I'm on Ardberg, Ardberg as well at the moment, and I've got a few others. There's behind, over there, behind the camera, is a, a nice little area full of all our Selection, <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's single malts, really, I don't really like. Yeah, I tend to prefer the Highlands and the Speysides, mm. um, but uh, I'm struggling to think. I'm pretty easy to please. 
I mean, I'll even drink the peaty stuff, <coughs> excuse me, to be honest, if I have to. Not uh, if I have a sign. But yeah, space sites for me. Yeah. Um, what else? So I'm just scrolling, just bear with me. I was going about the echo. Um, okay, so um, we've got one here, which is a bit more specific, which is from uh, Project Vanaya, of course, which is Manuel. Oh, Manuel, hi. Random boat question. Any advice on a solar arch dinghy davits on a catch? Since we're in the med, we're often med moored, meaning uh, you need to exit via the stern. Yeah, if you're not aware, med mooring is when you drop the hook and then you back up and you take your lines ashore. And then normally you need a passerelle to drop from the back of the boat onto the jetty. And uh, it's, a, it's a pain in the rectum. It really is. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a difficult one. I guess your only option is to have a very high uh, solar rack. So high enough that you can walk underneath, high enough that you can actually put out your passerelle. Uh, I would say that with our Davit system, it's, it is the one regret I have is that we should have made ours a little bit higher. Uh, that's actually so that when we stow the dinghy at sea, we've got no chance of following seas hitting it. But um, yeah, that's really your only option. Or to do what we've done, which is to have the side panels uh, mounted at the rear of the boat on the sides. That's uh, always an option. So are we talking uh, med mooring or going into marina? Med mooring. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, yeah. that's the best advice I can give you, Manuel. But anyway, thank you for uh, putting that question up. Good morning to you. Another question on uh, on the waterway. Go back to walking from Dwayne. Do water makers require a means of adding material? Uh, minerals sorry i've heard the water is so clean it's lacking in vitamins and minerals which it is but as long as you're eating and you're eating properly you're getting all those in your food so the reason for taking the water is purely hydration your body needs water as well as obviously minerals and vitamins mm. which you should get in your food so we don't bother with any of that we don't and when we do come into a marina or a local jetty then we will add the uh, local water to it as well but i think it's a fair question because i have noticed mm. there have been times when we've been using water maker water only uh, your skin starts to dry up a little so you might start to get say hang nails really? or, yep or your nails become a little bit brittle um so we do notice that but as liz says yeah you substitute your nutrients in, in your food yeah fruit veg really important and uh julie Shearbeck. Thank you. She says thank you. We say thank, thank you back. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, there was a very good question here from Peter. Would you start Yacht Life this year? Yes, and that is I something that, that uh, I've been thinking about a lot because a lot of our videos are put out there to help people become liverboards. Mm. Uh, but it's a big question. Would you become a liverboard in this day and age? Now, it has been said we have read this in a multitude of places, but I've yet to see evidence of it, that yacht second-hand boat sales have actually gone up since the pandemic. I that. Um, difficult to believe, but uh, it, let's say that's true. Uh, we understand that a lot of people, because of the current situation, are reassessing their lives. They're spending more time at home. Yeah. They're not able to travel abroad. Uh, so perhaps they're thinking, well, why not spend it on the water on a boat? If yeah. I'm going to be stuck locally, why not do that? They're watching sailing the... channels. They hang on. I, I prefer to do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I can. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, I hadn't really, really thought that through. Yeah. So I think it's. Um, I think it depends on what you want to do as a liverboard. You know, if you want to go around the mm. world in two years, pointless. Yes. Because the borders are closed. If you just want to move onto a boat and you're happy to sail in the area where the boat is, so for instance UK, we know the UK, you want to buy a boat in the UK, you're probably still going to be able to circumnavigate the UK, and that's quite an undertaking and would be really interesting, lots and lots of things to do. That would keep you going for ages until you're able to go across to Europe. Certainly uh, in Malaysia you can, you, can, you can go a little bit of sailing in Malaysia. So it depends where you are, what the rules, COVID rules are for you, and what do you want to do out of it. But a lot of people think, oh, I want to buy a boat and go around the world. No, I wouldn't no, do that that's at the moment. Although you could spend, and we recommend that you do spend quite a lot of time getting to know your boat. So you could do all that. Yeah. Sh Seamus has got a, uh, a question here which kind of follows on from that. He says, uh, how are you guys planning to cope with the possibility of being stuck in Sabah yeah. for what could be another year if borders don't open? I imagine the marinas are expensive and a bit confining. Uh, yes, the uh, there are literally two marinas on the whole of this coastline. Uh, 
um, and two, three boat yards. Uh, the one we're in is quite pricey. Yeah, we couldn't afford to stay. Uh, it's not a place that we can afford to stay normally. Now, of course, as most of you know, we do prefer to spend our time at Anchor because it's cheaper, it's cooler, it's nicer. And at certain times of the year, when the weather is clement, you can spend months at Anchor without it being an issue. The Malaysian authorities here have been very understanding of our situation. They also recognise that, of course, we are an important part of the local economy as well, whether we are spending time in the marina or getting the boat fixed in boatyards. So Sabah has a lot going for it, not only in terms of sailing, but in terms of travel on land as well. So we're not too worried about being stuck here for a year uh, kicking our heels without something to yeah, do. Plenty to do. There is plenty to plenty do to here. Do. Yeah. So that's not the issue. The, the the biggest, the only issue for me is getting home to see my family. That yeah. every month, another month passes, that plays more and more on my mind. And with the current state of the UK, I don't want to go back there. No. And my parents, I believe they would like to see me. <laughs> uh, they don't want me going back as well no. because I could be a risk. That's the only issue that I have with being stuck in Sabah. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the best place we could have ever been stuck, mm. to be honest with you. It's great here. Um, I've just seen from Sue Peck, Nutty Traveller, and Dean Winsbury, names I know well, that boat sales are definitely going up and prices are going up. So if you want to buy an Oyster 435 right now, give us a call. <laughs> Apparently prices are going up. <laughs> Kev Berry says, what's the best anchor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for, uh -oh. those, for those who don't know, that's one of those questions that's <laughs> guaranteed to divide the pub. So uh, we're not even going there, Kev, and you know that. <laughs> MC 400 Foot Cricket says, as a former DJ, what are your thoughts on modern EDM? I've no idea what EDM is because I'm ignorant. Well, so here's the thing. EDM is a very strange uh, expression. EDM has the, the expression, okay, it stands for electronic dance music, uh, which is a ridiculous tag because pretty much all music since the 80s has been electronic, da dance music, that is. So it's a bit of a sort of spurious term, but uh, there is a certain type of music that they, is called EDM. Uh, not particularly my favourite, but then... Do you split EDM up into electro house, future bass, that kind of stuff? I quite like some of it, but there's a lot of dance music that is very formulaic. And uh, I could talk about this for another two hours. So <laughs> perhaps we should have a private chat about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was he that also said, what was your favorite Manchester band? Oh. Are you someone that he knows? Because he was at Manchester University. No, we just, I think we just have a love of music. Okay. My favourite Manchester band were uh, probably, um, oh God, it's early in the morning, I've forgotten. Not Happy Mondays, although I quite like Happy Mondays. Uh, oh, the boys. Not um, in Spiral Carpets. The brothers. Um, what are they called? Don't say Oasis. No, no, the brothers that you met. Oh, Chemical Brothers. Chemical Brothers. No, but they're not a Manchester band. Oh, okay. They formed him. So Chem okay. Chemical Brothers, uh, I knew Tom at university and uh, he DJed for a big party I put on before they were the Chemical Brothers. Okay. But uh, yeah, they're not, they're not from Manchester. Okay. Um, I love Happy Mondays. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff's good, isn't it? New Order, I suppose. Yeah, everybody likes them. Everyone loves New Order. I think they were slightly overrated. Joy, Joy Divit. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Joy, I nothing. Joy Division, like they're Beatles. another great band. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's nothing to do with the. Uh, here we go. Come on. Come on, Liz. Come on. No, no, no. Come no. and find it. No, no. Sorry, I've lost it. <laughs> um, lots of people are saying that, the, that boats are really going up. Okay, right. I mean, maybe you guys have a better idea of what the boat price uh, market is like at the moment because we're not looking to buy a boat, whereas you, perhaps you guys are. So we'd, we'd love to know. Mm, it's um, an interesting one. Let us know. We've been on for an hour and 10 minutes, so we are actually... Oh, we've still got 554 people. Yes. Oh, no. We've got a well, lot of people on. watching still, so... If you want to stay watching, you need to ask us a question. Put so it in the, put it in the super now. chat so we can see it, because uh, otherwise, then this is one of the problems with live broadcast, we're just going to sit here with our heads hunched down, scrolling through comments. <laughs> so uh, stand out, hit that super chat. 
Um, okay, so what else can we say? Where are we right now? Uh, we are currently in the marina. We're looking to get out as soon as possible. We've got a few jobs to do. Uh, we've just repaired a puncture in the dinghy. We've got a little yeah, bit of that in an up and coming okay. video. And uh, we are free to leave the marina and go to anchor, but we can't go outside the district because it is an official lockdown at the moment. Mm. Uh, so all we can do is literally go a mile or two up the coast and drop the hook there. We've just had some really, really nasty weather come through. It has been, it was raining constantly for a week, wasn't it? It was just. It was awful. It was a deluge. Everything was damp. Floods. I mean, we're quite dry all the way here, up the but... coast. Uh, it's just been nasty. So actually, it was quite a quite a good time to be stuck locked away in the marina. We've just had the anchor galvanised as well, so we were waiting for that. Uh, so really, we have no excuse now to get out. So we're going to finish up those videos. Uh, line them up ready for and if you missed it daily episodes for two weeks and uh and, that, and then we're going to uh then we're going to be going out to anchor okay got a couple of things here ron cheers ron thank you so much that was very kind of you and then deb gale any oh, advice you, deb. for a 50 plus newbie sailor couple getting ready to live aboard after 25 years married living in an apartment i.e so not to end in divorce don't, don't do oh. it so don't difficult. do it at least you've lived in an apartment together so you're used to being mm. unless it's a massive great big mansion apartment you're used to being a little bit enclosed um it really tests relationships living in a small space on a boat um, and if you pass those tests it makes you even closer you learn to really trust have, have the other passed, ones have i passed the test yeah you're still on probate no you have uh we've learned over the years you know how far the other one um can go in certain situations you know if it's physically it's all getting too much of a challenge for me when we're doing big sales he'll step in but he also knows that when he's failing I can step in and I will step in so that's the sailing side of things have 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 your own interests yes uh, try or have an interest outside just being on a boat and sailing yeah um, and uh, allow each other space as well maybe even have your yeah. own space on the boat it does depend on the size of the boat but uh, as you know Liz and I have our own separate spaces and the great thing about our two spaces is that there's a massive bulkhead in between the two yeah. so we don't even have to look at each other yeah. uh, that's probably saved our relationship yes uh, it means many I can times. just sit on the phone and look at videos and he thinks I'm doing some work <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. oh Martin have you seen that Yep, Martin, thank you. Uh, when do you use an anchor alarm while on the hook? And how, if did you manage to get confident about your anchor holding? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we don't use an anchor alarm, actually. No. Uh, we used to, but I can honestly say, and I think any yachty out there will know, that these uh, new design anchors, and I, we've got a Rockner, but there are others out there, these things hold so well that um, we've never really felt a need to. I think the thing is when the weather picks up or when the situation will potentially compromise your safe holding, you're awake anyway. So you will have, uh, we set Navionics up to record your track and our all-in-one offline maps, which is our satellite app also, will put a mark where we drop the hook and then when the weather's bad, we'll maybe check that every 10 minutes. So you'll expect to see erratic movements and over a period of time you'll get a big arc as the tide changes um, and once you accept that and you know that the boat is going to move around seemingly erratically mm. then uh, there shouldn't be a need for an anchor alarm mm. um, because you wake up don't you if yeah are odd. you just wake up when you know mm. your boat you just you, you even in the middle of sleep something will normally wake you up it wakes you up more often than me and then throughout the night there's any kind of weather you just just check 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 that track throughout the night and if it's really bad then you should be on anchor watch anyway to be honest with you another shout out to patrick slevin now patrick, patrick great to hear from you patrick actually featured in one of yeah, our too. videos many years ago when we were up at phuket yacht haven and we had a chat with him and patrick was mm -hmm. looking to buy a boat in fact if i remember rightly uh, his father had a boat already and he was looking to buy his own boat so he had some cruising experience and ended up buying a boat and i think patrick if i'm right in saying you stuck to the what are the islands on the aussie coast called that everyone goes to uh, that will come to me anyway 
He asks, if you were to change boats, what yes. would you have oh, different God. from Esper? It depends how much money you've got. You see, it's got to be a cutter. I love catches, but so few people make catches. So anyway, uh, the Amel 60. No, but he's asking, what would you have different? Uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, is he? Yeah. He's not asking for what model. No, he's asking, what would you have oh. different? I think a bigger cockpit because our cockpit's very small it's you a mid center like cockpit it. it's designed to keep you safe in rough weather mm. uh, but the compromise is that it's very small so uh, even lying down you know they're not it's not particularly wide so I think a bigger cockpit um, storage but the, I think whatever boat we had we wouldn't have enough storage yeah. we just it's like women's handbag it just fits for the size of the container uh, I mean you did mention before about uh, a water maker uh, uh, generated from uh, the engine and the other thing was generator yeah I think the generator, a, the generator. marine generator although I think uh, I've been looking at battery prices and battery technology uh, as you know we have lithium when we bought our lithium what a couple of years ago now it was pretty expensive and I've been looking at the same batteries today which we can actually get shipped from China to Malaysia are now ridiculously cheap that we could double our battery bank for the same price as what we invested in two years ago. Going on from that, I'd say if it was available, electric power, just get away, with, get, do away with diesel. That yeah, would be well, fantastic. It, it, it is available. It's just not efficient. Not good enough. It's yeah. not efficient enough. Uh, uh, but I think the point I was trying to make was that there could come a time fairly soon when you actually negate the need for a generator. Of course, at the moment, generators are used, even if you've got electric power, uh, battery, uh, things like lithium, quite often you'll install a generator just as backup to charge that up. Um, but I don't think we're too far off from doing away with that as battery technology changes. And it does seem to change every 10 years or so uh, that maybe we don't need the generator at all, which, yeah. would, which we don't have anyway, apart yeah. from a little portable. Yes, kind of thing. Yeah, so on the whole, not much. Wouldn't change very much. Like the layout, I haven't got a problem with the cockpit. He would prefer a bigger one. Uh, love the catch. Really, just really love the sail plan. By the she way, it, so well. it was the Whit Sundays that Patrick. Oh yeah. Patrick's again. Patrick yeah. came back along with Kev, and uh, Steve uh, Gagnon says no catamaran. No. It's uh, should we not, <laughs> sorry. Should we just not go there? <laughs> no, with catamarans never been on the on the cards really. Mm. Uh, we've made this point before. We don't have a problem with catamarans, and some of them are great. Some of mm. them are you know the the benefits that you get from a cat. But it's never really occurred to us. I think if price were no object, we'd just go for a bigger um, yeah. monohull. Yeah. Okay, Paolo, thank you so much, Paolo, in the super chat. He says, uh, thank you guys for the lovely live chat. Uh, and it's his first one with us. I hope that won't be the last. Cheers, Paolo. Thanks very Have much. Have a great one and be safe. All the best from um, Paolo. You see, my English is terrible. I can't well, pronounce it. Well, it's Paolo. Just say Paola. Paolo. No, Paolarian in, pa in Ascot. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much. That's his Patreon name. His name's Paolo. Yes, I know that. I just <laughs> struggle to pronounce it. Oh, what's your opinion of the old Amel catch versus the new single mast from Pyy? I I think it's a shame they went they stopped doing catches. Personally, what do you think? Yeah, I can understand why production costs more fashion. No, but also it's more if you know the, the, the faster. T I think technically sloops are more more efficient in terms of speed as well so there, there's lots of reasons why perhaps they did it but uh, I think there's a lot of new sailors who don't understand catches and just won't go anywhere near them they just do you not, think yeah a lot of people are think, thinking oh, I want to be a sailor and that's, a, it's, that's a fair first argument first option actually. is cat because it's like it's like sailing simple. in an apartment yeah. second option simple Bermuda sloop but a catch does look like a lot more work but of course we know it doesn't need to be yeah, no, I, I, I think it's a shame. So uh, just on the subject of batteries, there's a couple of comments on batteries here. Uh, Kev has, says he's looking at 48 volt, uh, 20 kilowatt batteries. Uh, Kev, by the way, um, if any of you are interested, Kev is designing his own catamaran and uh, he's halfway through the planning process of it. Uh, absolutely fascinating to mm. see what he's been like. He sent us plans. I don't know if it still stands, Kev, but he's looking at a twin masted cat, so one mast on each hull. 
uh, I think with a single sail on each, but uh, Kev knows his stuff. He's a helicopter pilot. He's a search and rescue helicopter pilot. He does know his stuff and he's a sailor. Um, but uh, the idea of 48 volts is an interesting one. It's not an area that I know, but uh, if any of you want to chat with Kev separately, then do please catch up with him on that. And then Sean Sim, he's talking about marine supercapacitor bank. Now, that is something that we did look at. We looked at supercapacitors and um, the technology is pretty much there. They're now producing supercapacitors in 12 volt, uh, literally car battery sizes. So that is something that we're keeping an eye mm. on, definitely. Mm. Right, what else have we got? Robert, thank you. Thank you very much oh, in the super chat. Uh, uh, he also says, my wife, <laughs> my wife is listening. Help me convince her to go sailing. Oh, Robert's wife, who apparently has no name. Laurie. 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 Um, have you been sailing yet? If you haven't been sailing yet, don't knock it till you try it. So if you haven't been, go out with some friends at the weekend, or we'd better still go on a holiday where you get to sail. You can do these sort of little patilla holidays. Of course, at the moment, not that easy, as we know. Get on some boats, take her out in nice weather. Get her out on a, on a beautiful boat in nice weather. Um, do you know what? When we started this, I'd only ever done a tiny little bit of sailing and I learned on the job, as it were, on the boat, how to sail and how to, to live on a boat. And it that was 15 years ago, I don't know, mm. I don't know, 15 years ago. And I haven't regretted it for one single day. There isn't a thing about this life that I regret. So just Basically, do it, do it, do it. Just do it. Just do but, loads but I, and loads of sailing. But I think, oh, the other thing as well is, is that uh, it's a bit like teaching your wife or your husband to drive. Mm. If you were to do a flotilla holiday, it's probably best if you don't skip the boat. Uh, maybe get a skipper in or if you've got friends, share the skippering. But you know how it is. If one of you is the boss and you have someone under your wing who isn't experienced and then you end up yes. in a situation where you get all stressed uh, the worst thing you can do is to lose your temper start screaming and shouting and losing your cool that's just going to put your wife off so just be aware of that yeah i mean one of the things i did is i did the i don't know where you are but i did the rya royal yacht association competent crew course and i guess there's those are all around the world and you go and you spend five days on a boat with other novices and um, and a teacher and I loved it and that's what told me I'm gonna love this lifestyle it was a great holiday some were not as keen as others and some did more than others you just get a feel for what it's like to be on a yacht it's usually quite a small cramped area and it's usually quite wet and <laughs> uh, you're gonna see the the more difficult side of it but you're also gonna get the chance to really sail because they take you out in pretty much any weather and so you really get a feel for what it's like to actually sail um, that's um, a good way to learn yeah I think so there's a couple of uh, more technical questions here how much power do you get from your solar panels do you need to run the engine at anchor or do your panels cover your power needs okay so here's the thing we have only 380 amp hours of lithium battery. That is the equivalent of double 700 amp hours of normal battery. And we have just under a kilowatt of potential power coming in from the solar panels. So they charge up super quickly. Under normal circumstances, the batteries are always topped up. We never have an issue. The problem is, is that we do video editing and we have a very powerful mini PC. That thing sucks up power. That's so if I am editing and previously, of course, some episodes would take a few days to do and I'm on that all day, that hammers the power. So uh, under normal circumstances, not a problem. Rarely have to run the engine, especially with all this glorious sunshine. Uh, but when you start using all those big objects on the boat, then yes, it will suck up the power. And is that your doppelganger? <laughs> that, someone else commented. Someone yeah. said this looked like Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Or just Bernie. Here he is. He still doesn't have a name, but he's travelled with us. He's been around a long time. Since we bought Esper. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but... Uh, I just love his Adidas sneakers. 
He's even laced them up properly as well. You had those sneakers and you had a top like that. So yes, it is. And Quest for Thunder. Hello, guys. Yes, um, still waiting for the return to your quirky original intro. We know you love the intro. And we love the intro. We might just put it in now and again. But the trouble yeah. is it's got Millie in it. And we haven't spoken about Millie for the whole of this time. And we're still grieving for her. And just seeing pictures of her and thinking about her. A little, still a little bit too raw. I mean, you come across her in some of the footage sometimes. It's been I hard, do. hard for you. Yes. I, in fact, I put a bit of footage in yesterday in one of the up-and-coming episodes, uh, not realising that she was in it. And then when I looked a bit more closely, you can just see her head appearing in the bottom of the screen. And, um, yeah, I still find it difficult. Yeah. I don't really want to talk about no. it, to be honest. So, yes. Where do you stand on yours? In the middle? Uh, in the middle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yours, uh, it's an old design. And uh, to my knowledge... I don't I think, think there are production cruising boats made as yules anymore. I th I'm not. I mean, we've only been on board one. We went to go and look at a yule. Actually, it was built in '74, I think. Forty-six foot Bowman. Beautiful boat. It was a beautiful Very boat. Very pretty. Yeah, but being a '70s boat, the interior was a little bit tight. Um, but if that had been right, I think we would have bought that actually because that was a pretty special boat. Yeah. Uh, they're, and they're beautiful to look at. I, you can I, explain to anyone who doesn't know the difference between a yule and a catch. Anyone know? <laughs> a yule is where the mizzen mast is behind the rudder. So here's the forward of the boat. There's the main mast. There's the mizzen. On a catch, the rudder is here. On a yule, the rudder is there. Simple, eh? Yes. Can you usually tell by looking at them. Oh, but they do look similar. Um... Oh yeah, is Australia on your cruising plan, says Dreamtime Sail at all. Great Barrier Reef Islands are beautiful. Well, of course, Australia never was because we had Millie. But we don't have Millie anymore, so we don't have to have that problem of bringing a pet in. So to be honest, it's now not on the not plans. So <laughs> basically what I'm saying is possibility was always completely off, but there is a possibility, yeah, I, mean, I suppose. Ne and never say never. No. We never write off locations as you know we had an original plan current situation things are changing we have been thinking about uh, maybe we should explore indonesia a bit more mm. because there's a massive cruising territory mm. and uh, indonesia being next to malaysia it could make uh, our daily lives a lot easier than traveling further distances where uh, we're kind of traveling into the unknown in terms of bureaucracy so Australia could be part of that equation. Yes, and New Zealand. See, I've never been to New Zealand. Would love to go there. That's a long way away, and even further to get back to your folks. That's the problem. That is. We go away from the UK. That more is difficult the is to visit family. I mean, we did even talk about turning round and going back up the Red Sea. Mm. That could be an option. But of course, actually, that goes feeds into one of the other questions, which is what happens now with Brexit. Yeah. So when we were in the Med before. Uh, UK was part of the EU we could just stay wherever we like as long as all those EU countries we could stay there as long as we like you hardly even had to show your passport it was just very very easy now we're foreigners like everybody else so um, yes I've been reading some of the rules on that if we were to go back to Europe we would have to sort of keep going in and out uh, North Africa Turkey um, that which wouldn't be a problem. We always we were looking at North Africa when we were in Turkey. Yeah, we, we wanted to go there. When we were thinking of maybe going west, we were thinking of ducking into North Africa. That was pre-Arab Spring. Yeah, I think you know this is one of the problems at the moment with the cruising world is that uh, things are so up in the air. Uh, I'm seeing it becoming more difficult for cruisers at the moment where we are now, as we explained earlier in Sabah, things are pretty easy. Uh, considering Generally the situation the world, but uh, things could get more difficult and, yes. it, and it's that unknown it's the uncertainty of it which of course as sailors we embrace but uh, when it comes to bureaucracy you want to know where you stand and it's yeah. yeah so you know the idea of getting back to the med and making that a cruising ground of ours isn't quite as simple as it was in the old days that is for certain so uh, yes. Michael asks, "What about South America?" Oh, I'd love to go. To yeah, South America. Um, again, it's it, it's not written off. Uh, mm. We both love the idea of South America, so um, yeah, or at least Central America. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
it's uh, it, it's difficult. Um, looks like uh, Jugger Loking. Uh, he's going to be sailing at the weekend. Four hundred dollars for a weekend sail crew. I don't know if you're paying that or if you're being paid that. Uh, but uh, good that you're actually getting out some sailing. We'd love to know what sailing is like uh, around the west coast of Canada. I've been to Vancouver, by the way. I have visited uh, that part of the world, and that's one of the reasons why we'd love to go there, because I just fell in love with it. Mm. Uh, but we'd love to know a bit more about what it's like to sail. I understand that around Vancouver Island it's pretty protected, mm. um, and there are enough places uh, in the winter time when it becomes too perhaps too cold to sail, when it starts icing up. Uh, there are you places can just go in somewhere. You go in somewhere, plenty of places to plug in. With heating. This is the other issue, is that with our plan to go up to Japan and over to Canada via the Aleutians, it does mean putting in a heater. And the idea of doing anything more to Esper, having already modified her so much, to then add in a heating system, kind of, I get a bit depressed just thinking about it, to be honest. You've been putting it off and putting I it off. I keep putting it off. And uh, yeah, that's another issue which I'm trying to get my it's head around. It's quite a big financial commitment and we don't want to make it until we're absolutely 100% sure we're yeah. going to be going somewhere cold. I think inevitably we will at some stage, but not right now, so yeah. Nutty Traveller says BC waters will never disappoint. He mm -hmm. sailed Everyone for years all around the coast and we do hear that. We hear that a lot. Uh, Navis Worker says come to Halifax. So uh, yeah, it's uh, we, we haven't written any of these right. places off. I don't think there's anywhere in the world there are a few places in the world where we've said definitely don't want to go there. Mm, like where? That's what I'm saying. There aren't any, are <laughs> no, there? There aren't. No. There really aren't. Somalia, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Went past there before. Uh, Nigeria, of course, with the piracy oh, yes. issues piracy. in Nigeria, yeah. it's worse than in Somalia. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I did fantasise about sailing up the west coast of Africa, but uh, like that's but certainly not going to happen. No. East coast, though. Yeah. Okay, I think, to be honest with you, it's half past seven, we've been on for an hour and a half. I think that's more than anyone needs to Okay, ask. just, yeah, we'll just, last last, <laughs> last call for questions, uh, just put them in the super chat and we'll very quickly answer them, but I think it is time, as Liz says, to, to maybe wrap up now. So we should thank you all for tuning in. Sorry it's gone on for an extra half an hour for the people watching this retrospectively, but uh, we hope that we have covered off where we're coming from at the beginning of this year the exciting news of putting out daily episodes for two weeks so that starts next sunday and what's the date for anyone who's the, I'll have watching a look. right now so the 25th today let's have a look is monday uh next sunday is 31st. the s la 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 la, 31st yep. yeah 31st of january the first of daily two weeks worth of daily videos put it in the diary yeah if you're not already subscribed subscribe hit the notification bell uh, go, continue to go out the same time as they always have done, which is about between 9 and 10 in the evening, our time. Work that one out yourselves. <laughs> yeah, and thank you guys for tuning in. I mean, yes. we're just, I, I almost don't want to stop because there, we've, we've managed to maintain, in fact, if we look at the big graph, we're getting more and more people joining oh. us. Uh, but uh, hey, go back and watch the beginning where we were a bit more awake. I think now we need another coffee, don't we? We do, we do definitely need another coffee. I definitely, oh, I can hear the ducks outside quacking, which means they need feeding. I've got them some food you know, to give. The ducks, it's one of the pleasures of this <laughs> marina in lockdown. The ducks, there are six ducks here, four brown, one white and one black. And they are the sweetest things, aren't They're they? They're fun, they've all got characters. And they come round to each boat in turn and each that, boat that, that. feeds them. We've got a big bag of cheap dog food that they're yeah. being fed at the moment, and they love the dog food. <laughs> we get, I don't know if you can actually hear them in the Probably mic, but they're, uh, they're, they're cracking away up there. And uh, yeah, it's just, it always raises a smile, it does, doesn't it? And we yeah. need that uh, we at need the moment. In our lives. We, need, we need to keep the, uh, the smiles up. So. We do. Okay, everybody, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We must do this more often. We will try and schedule one in maybe before we leave the marina. Yeah. We'll do a kind of a bit more focused one next time. Uh, uh, so let us know what you want want us to talk about and we'll come up yeah, with something. Yeah, don't, don't forget uh, FTB mates and Patreons, a ton, uh, we tend to gear our live broadcasts according to their questions. 
So uh, please do consider supporting us by becoming an FTB mate or a Patreon and get your questions in there because we'll come to you first to help sort of guide or steer the next live broadcast. So we're looking for your ideas. Let us know. And, and the other thing I keep forgetting to say is that over the Christmas and New Year period, we got a lot of presents in our rum fund loads so yeah. many of you sent us tops and bottles of uh for christmas and new year that was fantastic i have replied to most of them i've still got a few to go so if you if you just want to just chuck us a couple of dollars or something into the use the rum fund and ask us a question there and we'll set up a dialogue together so yeah thank you ever so much all of you rum funders it's magnificent and oh i don't know it was lovely wasn't yes it? really appreciate yeah. it thank you guys for tuning in and uh yeah here's to a happy 2021 yes let's hope it's better than 2020 peace and fair winds guys yeah take care <laughs>